Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Tuesday is upon us once again, but it's Valentine's Day or Hallmark Day or Singles Awareness Day, whichever you would like to call it, but we will get into that later. Kind of, I'm going to speed this up because Leroy is eyeballing me because it is nearly lunchtime. We have TTMs, four of them. See, four, four this week. No RTSs, so let's get right into it. <coughs> Pardon me. Number one, we're coming off with a set that was featured kind of prominently uh, last week, the old 1971 Tops. But our first one coming back is, I'm pretty sure it's Laron Lee. The only clips of him I could actually find on YouTube were when he was playing over in Japan. Uh, but I sent it on the 19th of January, came back on the 7th, 19-day turnaround, uh... And he included an additional card, so two of one, signs for free. I got the address off Sports Card Forum. It's the one in Granite Bay, California. And here's the one I sent, the 1971 Tops. You can see he signed it over his signature, which I don't think I've ever actually had anybody do before. But this is the one that he sent me, and I, I've never seen it before. This is... I guess, from what I can tell, Baseball Magazine, Nostalgic Stars from 1994, and is written in Japanese when he was playing for the uh, Lotte Orions. And that, to me, that is awesome. Like, if anybody reads Japanese, please let me know what this... I can kind of figure out, but please let me know what, what this says. Uh, very curious. So we're going to put those both up there. Mr. Lee, thank you so much. Um, looking over his career real briefly, uh, started off playing for the St. Louis Cardinals from 69 to 71, Padres from 71 to 73, uh, then went to the Indians from 74 to 75, the Dodgers 75 to 76. However, he then went on to have an incredible career over in Japan for uh, Lotte. Played from 1977 to 1987. Um, let's see, four-time uh, NPB, that's I think, what is in Japanese, uh, Nippon Professional, I don't know how it's pronounced, Nippon Professional Baseball, four-time All-Star, four-time the Best Nine Award, which is uh, the player awarded annually to the player at each position in both leagues of Japanese professional baseball. So, okay, so maybe it's like, uh, kind of like, almost like a gold glove type thing. But the best nine award. Very, very, very long career in Japan. Uh, 912 RBIs, 283 home runs there, and a 320 batting average in the MLB, 250 batting average, 31 home runs. And 152 RBIs, so a monster playing over in the Japanese leagues. And I'm now curious to see if I can find more clips of him. So we're off to a fantastic start. And uh, coming up, yet another baseball. Return number two, and like I say, back to the diamond. This one, a more, uh, a more modern one. Uh, we can see here we have... Roman Quinn, I'm going to pull the, the card out so we can admire it. Signed as he's leaping up over the wall. Great shot. Uh, great shot of him, by the way, getting up the wall when he was playing for uh, for the Phillies. But sent on January the 30th, came back on the 7th. Very fast, eight-day turnaround. Uh, it was actually a Google search. Uh, found an address for him. I think I was actually through White Pages in uh, Port St. Joe, Florida. Uh, free sign, just, I, I can't get over the picture, like, he's going up, like, what stadium is that, help me out, I actually don't know what stadium it is, uh, let's see, uh, broke into the major leagues in 2016, playing for Philadelphia, played there for 2018 until most of this past season, then got traded to Tampa Bay, but now looks like he will be, uh, heading to camp for the Cleveland Spiders, that's right, uh, I will not call them the other name because it is silly. So the Cleveland Spiders, uh, let's see, up till this point, still very early in his career. Uh, 226 batting average, 8 home runs, 45 RBIs, and with camp 
uh, spring training, I should say, starting very soon. There's going to be a whole lot of baseball stuff that goes out to uh, spring training athletes. But, Mr. Quinn, thank you so much. Best of luck this season. And coming up, the titular return. Is it titular or titular? I, I think it's titular. I can't, I actually, one of those things. But coming back is a Canadian Football Hall of Famer. Never played in the NFL, had a very long career in the CFL, but actually now living in the Las Vegas area, found his address on sports card forum. Ray Elgard, uh, sent on the 28th, came back the 9th, 12-day turnaround, a free sign, one of one, and here right here on the all-world CFL, which, <coughs> pardon me, I can't remember where I got this. I got a bunch of it from a friend of mine here. You can see he signed it, and looking over, I mean, you talk a basically monster career in the CFL. Uh, da -da. Second round pick in the CFL draft in 83, actually came out of the University of Utah. Uh, played the entirety of his career from 1983 to 1996 with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Uh, Four-time CFL All-Star. Won several awards, uh, won the CFL's Most Outstanding Canadian Award in 1988, 1990, and 1992. Uh, was part of the Grey Cup, uh, the Grey Cup winning uh, Rough Riders back in 1989. Uh, and it looks like he still may hold, or at least at the time of his retirement, held the league record with 830 receptions for 13,198 receiving yards, which I think is still uh, the top of the CFL record book, inducted into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame, class of 2002. And from what I was looking, he was a slot back. Now, slot back, a little different than American football. Uh, in the CFL, they have, you know, the additional player. I'm not sure if it's the slot back per se, but... Looking at it and watching CFL, I would put it kind of more akin to, it's like a weird utility player slash tight end. It's it's a guy, it's a player that can run, catch, and block. So essentially like, I would say kind of similar to a tight end, but probably does a little more pass receiving. But either way, Mr. Elgard, thank you so much. Another member of the Canadian Football Hall of Fame joining my collection and... Man, but I, I wish I would have been watching the CFL back in the day. I only started watching it probably within the past 10 years or so, but great stuff, and it's been around a lot longer than the NFL, so I think more people should uh, give it its due. So we're going to pause on him. We got one more, and this one, I'm really, ex I'm really, really excited for this one. So hold on, and you'll see why. When you read the thumbnail... You see, you saw American Gladiator return, and that is exactly what has come back from the American Gladiators jank pack. I found an address for Miss Ray, I guess Hullet, but she was better known back in the day as Zap, the American Gladiator. Sent on the 28th, came back the 13th, 16-day turnaround. She has a P.O. box in State Line, Nevada that I found on... Um, uh, I think basically a white pages search. And not only did she sign the card in an interesting fashion, so two Zach on the front, then on the back, her signature and Zap, but also on perhaps the greatest stationery I've ever seen. <laughs> this is really cool. She wrote me a note dated February the 9th, Zach, thank you so much for your lovely letter. It was so That was so very thoughtful. I enclosed the signed card. I wish I could do more, but I have been inundated with autograph requests, requests etc. You take care from Ray, a.k.a. Zap. Well, Miss uh, Hullet or Miss Zap, however you would prefer, there's no need to do that. That is, just signing the card is more than enough. And, God, the American Gladiator Stationery. I love it. And just adds to it, and I am very, always very appreciative 
when they take the time just to sign it, let alone when they take the time to write an additional letter. So, an amazing, amazing TTM week. Plus, on top of that, I'm, I'm getting over my, oh, I'm getting over myself. Um, you gotta say, American Gladiators back in the day, probably more competitive than the NFL right now, especially with the hitting, man. These, these, uh, men and women were going at it major, big time. And she came, actually, from, and I did notice from the bodybuilding world, uh, was competing back in bodybuilding competitions dating back to 87, was on the cover of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different uh, fitness and bodybuilding magazines over her career from 88 to 95. Uh, she actually looks like uh, NPC. I don't know what NPC is, but in 1988, she actually won the Los Angeles NPC Championship for... I'll figure that out, but for, but for bodybuilding, a, and a sport I really want to learn more about, I don't know too much about it, but this is definitely the, um, the words fail me. The motivation, there it is, to find, uh, to find out more about it, so that is going to close out TTM Tuesday. Leroy is still staring at me like he's about to eat me, but I will close on this. With it being Hallmark Day... What are the plans you've got for this evening? I know me personally, probably one or two drinks, most likely a nice Manhattan in a very fancy glass will be involved. I will sit on my couch, Leroy will probably sleep, and I will continue my Valentine's Day tradition of watching My Bloody Valentine. Just because, why not? So that's going to do it for me. Hope you enjoyed it. Everybody have a good you know, Hallmark holiday, St. Valentine's Day, whatever you wish to call it. If you're going out, having dinner, whatnot, just be safe, and we'll see you tomorrow.